The world is crying out for affordable, no compromises, small electric cars. You only have to take one look at the comments section of our Geely Panda Mini video to see exactly how widespread that demand is. There are some competitors, such as the Wuling Bingo, but it's not going fully global yet. However, the world's second largest maker of pure electric vehicles has just entered the chat. And this is the BYD Seagull. Yes, this is the BYD Seagull, probably the most hotly anticipated small electric car of 2023. Thanks to BYD's now global presence, everybody's wondering whether this is the car that can bring affordable, no compromises, electric motoring to the masses. And today, that's what we're gonna try and find out. Just how good is this car? Is it grown up? or is it just cheap? But let's talk about the design. And I think BYD's design has done a really good job here. It looks really quite attractive, but they've also been very, very smart. They've used really clever features to disguise the shape and the size of this car. Small cars tend to be quite upright. They tend to feel a little bit top heavy, a little bit unstable. Look at this. BYD have used the A-frame design here, pointing down into the corners, same in the headlamps there as well, to give the car more stability on the ground, to make it look like it's much more stable, much more planted. We've also got these angry panda headlamps here, which I really quite like with some LED details in there as well. Here at the front, you can see we've got 16 inch alloy wheels. You get these in the top two editions, quite chunky, quite racy. They look quite suitable for this car, I would say. You get 15 inch steel wheels on the cheapest version of this car. You get a charging port at the front there. You do get fast charging. And you can see they've also played with the lines on the side of the car here as well, because as I said, these cars tend to look quite tall, quite boxy. And as a result, they get massive doors as well. We actually get four doors on this one. So you do get easy access to everybody, for everybody in this car. But they've used the lines here, this aggressive angular line here at the top of the door. And again, that one at the bottom there with this plastic panel here, which really helps to pinch the metal part of this door and make the car look a lot more compact and not quite as heavy as it might do if the door was all metal. So that's quite a smart look there. It's a mono box profile, which of course you might expect from this thing, but it's, it's very, very cool. By the way, there is no frunk in here. It's just metal and motors and stuff like that. You can also see we've got flush door handles here. And then as we come towards the rear, you can see we have quite a few features here that just finish off this compact racy design. Got sort of a Z-shaped feature here in the C-pillar around the lights, that looks quite dynamic. Then we've got an absolutely enormous rear spoiler, which is obviously not for aerodynamics because it's a city car. It's not even to conceal a rear window wiper. It's just to make the car look more racy and a bit more pointy. And I kind of quite like that, to be honest. We've got quite a high belt line on this car and then a bit of a Renault Aventime-esque, a little bit of a bustle bottom there just to give a bit more depth to the design. And then that A-frame from the front of the car, you can see here, is replicated by the reflectors, which does help to give more of a wider stance to this car, combined with that little diffuser at the bottom down there. In the trunk here, we've got a decent amount of space, quite a wide opening. There's no actual figures for how much space is in there, but probably about two 24 litre suitcases, two, sorry, two 24 inch suitcases should fit in there, no problem. It's quite deep as well, it's more than one hand deep. And if you want to fold down the rear seat, you can pull the tabs and it goes down as one piece. Apparently that unlocks up to 960 liters of space if you fold the rear seat down. So it's quite spacious actually, very practical. Actually got a usable boot, unlike some of the other small cars in this category, not bad. Now, small affordable cars tend to compromise the most on the interior. That's where it's most heavily felt. But here, I think the Seagull does a really, really good job. We've already got a really grown up dashboard that's quite nicely sculpted there. Large steering wheel, big one piece chairs with good bolsters, fake leather on them, so they feel quite premium as well. And the driving position is actually very good as well. So already we've got a very good base starting point for this car. What else do we get? We get a seven inch screen behind the steering wheel there, small enough that it's not obscured by the wheel, large enough to have loads of information on it. We get a 10.1 inch screen here, which by the way, still comes with BYD's rotating functionality. If you want vertical for maps or horizontal for videos, you've got the choice is yours. And you know what? It's a really good system as well. It's really quick. You can slide through here, no problem. Loads of apps in there, internet radio, karaoke, album, WeChat, Baidu, maps as well. It's got everything you need. and it's even got the slidey functions. I don't know what processor it's using, but it runs really, really quick. Well impressed with that system. 
Below that, we get some barrel kind of switches here on the dashboard for things like ventilation, your radio, changing your mode. And this is your drive selector on here. Toggle that up or down, press park on the end there. We also get a start stop button. If you get this car, don't forget to press the stop button when you leave the car, otherwise it will keep things running. Below that, you've got ventilation here, quite conveniently placed because it's pointed at your wireless charger. Yes, you get a wireless charger. Don't know exactly how fast it is. There's no ventilation on it, so it can be a little bit slow, can heat your phone up, but the ventilation can keep that nice and cool. And we also get a center console, which is something you don't always see in small cars. Two cup holders, quite a bit of deep space down there, a lot of space in the back as well. This is very convenient. As I said, we get a really good driving position, no compromises here because our footwell isn't impeded by the wheel arch there, so no issues. We get four-way adjustability as standard on these chairs electrically for the driver's seat, six-way on the top spec version. Steering is rake adjustable on all versions, reach adjustable as well on the top version of this car. So you can get a really good driving position in there. So where are we compromising on this car? Well, we only get four speakers, so two at the bottom of the doors, two at the top. Decent sound system, by the way, but only four speakers. That's the maximum you can get. We only get one USB-A socket, so we don't even get a USB-C socket. That's it for the whole car. Could possibly do with a couple more of those. Also, no panoramic roof on these cars. Not available as an option. But you get loads of other stuff. You get electrically adjustable mirrors. Electrically heated mirrors are standard. Electric windows are standard. 4G connectivity, which can also be used as Wi-Fi for your phones. Over-the-air updates, rear parking sensors, reversing camera, which you can see in here. You get a load of stuff in this car, actually. It's really impressive, and we're not even compromising on safety because we get driver and passenger airbags, curtain airbags, they're all of standard, and the top version of this car, you get side airbags as well. So I think we're doing really, really well in the Seagull. It's quite impressive what they've managed to pack in here. In the back, the big news is, We've got four doors, so we're not climbing around the back of that front chair, struggling to get in and get into the car, no problem. It's a four-seater once you get in here, so we only get two seat belts, same as in the Wooling Bingo. But you know what? It is spacious in here. This chair is as low as it will go, as far back as I need it. I've got absolutely loads of footroom down there, plenty of knee room as well. In fact, I have brought my tape measure to measure this. So it's 70 centimetres from back to back. It's only about 10 centimetres shorter than in big cars. That's quite impressive. And actually, I've got space above my head as well. So even though we're missing out on some light from the panoramic roof, the space in here is great. You could easily take four people on a long journey in this car in comfort, no problem whatsoever. We also get plenty of space in the door pockets, in the back of the chair, down there as well. And of course, we get electric windows. Yeah. This is a better back seat, I would say, than in the Wooling Bingo, 100%. I have to say, the first time that I sat down in the Seagull, I immediately felt quite impressed. The driving position already felt good, the dashboard felt quite grown up, and then I took it for a two minute drive around the block before parking it up. In those two minutes, it told me everything that I need to know about the car, namely that it is great fun to drive. It is hilarious, it is nimble, it's quick, it's agile, it just puts a massive smile on your face. You can just pull up, power all that acceleration all that electric power through the front axle. And dare I say it, this car actually has character. We've driven a lot of cars on this channel, as you know. They're mostly large cars, mostly electric SUVs and saloons. And, you know, they've all got rapid acceleration, fairly soft steering, comfortable suspension. They're not that different from each other in terms of the driving experience. This is something else. It is without a doubt the most fun car I've driven in 2023. It is bloody great. I just love lobbing it into a corner, powering the steering on. It's just fun. It's great. There's nothing quite like small, affordable cars for putting a smile on your face. And I really think it's down to that front wheel drive platform. It reminds me a lot of my original Mini. Not in terms of the handling. I'm not going to compare it like that because the Mini was amazing at handling. But just that smile inducing joy that runs through this, this earnest little vehicle pushing power through the front wheels as you're turning. And you can get a little bit of wheel spin in this car too. It's just flat out fun. I really, really like the way that it drives. As I said, it is front wheel drive, 55 kilowatt motor on there, 135 Newton meters of torque. It's about 74 horsepower in real money. So quite a bit more power than an original Mini. Don't know how much the car weighs, but it certainly doesn't feel very heavy. It will get you from zero to 50 kilometers per hour, the metric for smaller cars, in just 4.9 seconds, which means you've got all the pace that you need at traffic lights, nipping through traffic, at any speed, put your foot down in sport mode and you'll be gliding through gaps, no problem. It's perfect, perfect city car for that. 
In terms of the ride, well, yeah, you get quite a bit of body roll. If I lob it into this corner here, way, hey, feel like kind of lean in slightly. It's not that bad, actually, but you do feel a little bit of body roll. When you go over bigger bumps, the car does do this for a while, which, again, is quite funny. But, no, on the whole, it's pretty good. Also, it's obviously, it's electric, so it's quiet. You do get a little bit more road noise. I think the tyres are a little bit uh, cheaper, so they let a little bit more road noise in from the wheels. It's not from the motors, but it is overall, you know, more car than you're going to possibly want. You get a choice of two batteries on this car, 30 kilowatt battery on the two more affordable versions. That will get you 305 kilometers of range on CLTC. On the top spec version of this car, you get a 39 kilowatt hour battery, and that will get you 405 kilometers of range. That compares quite favorably to the Wuling Bingo which I believe has something like 200 kilometers and 333 kilometers of CLTC range on their models. So you get quite a bit more than the bingo. You can also switch in the system between dynamic and CLTC range. So we've got it on dynamic, we've got about 160 kilometers of range on there, about 52% battery, which means that in reality, on the, four, on the top model, we're gonna get more like 330 kilometers of, of real, real world range. And we've been getting about 10.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and you can find that in the system as well. Also charging, on the smaller battery you get 30 kilowatt DC fast charging, on the big battery 40 kilowatt DC fast charging, basically you'll charge 50% in half an hour or the whole battery from absolute dead in one hour, which is totally adequate to be honest with you. We do get some customization in the system in terms of the brake feel, so you can make the braking a little bit more sharp a little bit more sporty or a little bit softer sporty mode is totally fine it's not too aggressive at all the you can also change the energy recovery from sport to comfort mode and actually there's not a massive difference between the two neither of them are particularly aggressive one will just bring you to a stop slightly quicker than the other basically also this is the really cool thing it's got a really tight turning circle parking is an absolute doddle you'll just drive into parking spaces no problem because the turning circle is just 4.95 meters look at that brilliant <laughs> you can just do donuts in the street with it it's just marvelous it's really really fun I've, I've enjoyed this car so much and I've driven it for of course a week since that first two minutes and it's just reaffirmed all the things that I thought about it now in terms of dimensions obviously we mentioned earlier 3.78 meters long it's 1.715 meters wide so nice and narrow for the city 1.54 meters tall and of course has that wheelbase of 2.5 meters that I mentioned earlier. Now the pricing is where it gets really good. It is a bit more expensive, a little bit more expensive than the Wuling Bingo but honestly I believe you are getting so much more car for your money with this because it's really well equipped and actually a much more fun and a much better car to drive as well. It starts at the most basic version at just 73,800 RMB which in Western money is £8,000 or just over $10,000. Quite incredible. If you go for the top of the range version with the extra kit like this one and the larger battery starts at just £10,000. 89,900 RMB, which is £10,000 or about $12,500. It's a really, really incredible car. And if BYD can sell it at anything like that price elsewhere in the world, it is gonna be a sales smash hit. People who want a small affordable electric car with no compromises have finally found the car that will do it for them. We also get, by the way, cruise control on all versions of this car, and you can get headlight beam assist, you can get adaptive cruise control, you can get uh, emergency braking, automatic emergency braking, and lane departure warning as well if you go for the uh, optional package on the top spec version of this car. The cruise control works pretty well in practice. It will avoid the car in front, but it can be a little bit jerky. It's not quite as smooth as on a bigger car, but overall, it's an excellent car and a really, really fun car to drive. I've absolutely loved it. So that's it for our review of the BYD Seagull. Hands down, the most fun I've had in a car in 2023. Throwing this thing around for the last week has been so smile inducing. To say this car has got bags of character is already a massive compliment. But you know what? I didn't get the hype about this car. I didn't understand why people were talking about it so much. But now I know what it can do. Now I know it's going to all those BYD markets around the world. Now I know how much the demand is for affordable, no compromises, electric motoring. 
This car has got so much potential. It's got a massive cabin, it's got a great feature list, it's got a really fun drivetrain, and you know what, in China at least, it's got an amazing price. If they can get anything like this price elsewhere in the world, this car will sell like hotcakes, and it deserves to be an absolutely massive success. Thank you so much for watching, and if you do, thank you for subscribing. We'll catch you next time.